Hi, I'm Matt from Haltech, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at how the Elite Series ECU handles knock control and self-learning of the ignition map. So I'm going to break this topic into three sections. First, there's knock detection. Now that's how the ECU goes about detecting if the engine is actually knocking. Then, we have knock control, which is what the ECU does once it's detected knock. And finally, the ignition map learning, which is what long-term changes the ECU can make to the ignition map to prevent the engine from knocking in the future. So let's get straight into it. Knock detection. This requires a knock sensor be wired into the ECU. Now the Elite 1500 has a single knock sensor, while the 2500 has two knock sensor inputs. Knock sensor inputs are dedicated inputs on the ECU because it's a very specific circuit required to actually detect knock with a wide range of different sensors. So let's take a look at the ESP software on how to set this up. In the ESP software, enable knock detection and select how many sensors you'll be using and which bank each sensor is located. You can set up a knock light output from this tab in the software as well. This can be a dedicated knock detection light, or you can choose to flash a check engine light when the ECU detects knock. With the wiring inputs set up, click on the knock detection tab and you'll see a spectrograph. What this is, is a visual representation of the knock signal that's coming into the ECU. Now it's worth stopping and explaining how a knock sensor works for a moment here. Basically, a knock sensor is a microphone. Now, knock causes noise at a certain frequency in your engine. Just like, say, a G in music is noise at a certain frequency, and an F in music is a certain noise at a different frequency. Now, to most accurately detect knock in your engine with the Elite ECU, we try to focus in on the specific frequency of noise that knock makes. This helps to eliminate background noises, or following on from the music analogy, we try and separate the G's from the F's and all the other notes that might be happening in the engine. So that's what this knock frequency setting is on the knock detection tab. It's telling the ECU that you need to listen out for this frequency of noise because that is knock. Now the question is, how do we find what that frequency is? Well, we can use an online formula, which normally gets us close, or we can use this spectrograph function here. To use the spectrograph function, we need to actually get the engine to knock. So let's put the car on the dyno and show you how it works. So what the spectrograph is, is a visual representation of the output of the knock sensor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the vehicle up to about 55 kilometers an hour on this dyno, that's what I've got it set to, and I've put some extra timing into the ignition map so I know the engine's actually going to knock and I'm just going to roll in on that, just get the engine to lightly knock and then I'm going to back out. And what you're going to see in the spectrograph is what knock looks like from a knock sensor. We're going to use that data to set our knock frequency. Let's turn the car on and let's get it up to speed on the dyno. So I'm in a high gear, I'm in fourth gear here, and just coming up onto speed there. And what I'm gonna do now is turn on the spectrograph, and what you see here is, this is background noise. This is the, the noise the engine is just making. I'm gonna roll into the throttle, and what you'll see, just in highlighted areas, that's gonna be knock, because I'm making the engine knock, because I put extra timing in there, so let me do that now. And you see that there? You can see knock occurs through here at about 11,000 hertz. I'll just do it again so you can see. That's where you get that real concentration of red information. So if I just click up here, 11,000 hertz, set as center frequency, and up here the ECU is then selected 11,000 as my knock frequency. So that's how you set the center frequency of knock. We get the car up to speed on the dyno, we put a bit of extra timing in there, and we just lightly get the car to knock. We don't want to cause the thing to break just enough that we can detect it in the software, find the frequency, and apply it. The other settings in this page here are start angle and the duration. Now, because knock will only occur somewhere around top dead center, because that's when there's the most compression, we don't need to listen out for knock at 
um, on the exhaust stroke, for example, because there's no compression there. So we say, well, we're going to start listening out for knock. In this case, I've got it set to five degrees before top dead center, and I'm going to listen out for knock for about 40 degrees. So once we found the center frequency of knock, we can know that the ECU is listening out for just the right note within the engine. But there's still a bunch of background noise that we want to filter out, and that's where the knock threshold map comes in. So what we want to do after we set up the center frequency is go into the software and we're going to set up the knock threshold map. So what this knock threshold map is, is it's essentially a filter. It's there to filter out background noise. So we've set the frequency where that we're looking out for, but now we're saying, well, there's still a lot of noise in this engine. Let's try and filter out the background noise because things like valves and pistons and rods and uh, AC compressors and all those sorts of things in, in your engine create an amount of noise. And some of that noise will be at the same frequency of knock. But what we want to do is filter that out. And so the way to set this up is we're going to go back to our ignition timing Mac and we're going to take a few degrees of timing out of it so we know the engine's definitely not knocking. And then we're going to measure how much noise the knock sensor reads and we know that is just normal engine background noise and we're going to set this knock threshold map to be just below that. So we filter out any noise that the engine makes that isn't knock. So now we've set up our knock threshold map. The ECU knows when the engine is knocking, but it's still not doing anything. So that's where we've got to go and set up knock control. Let's do that. We turn on knock control. Now this is what the ECU actually does when the engine knocks. We've got four settings basically. We've got the mode, whether we banked or unbanked, one or two sensors, short-term retard, short-term decay, and hysteresis. So what these three settings basically are, are what does the ECU do when it hears knock? Well, the short-term retard is, you know what? The engine's knocking, let's immediately pull some timing out of it. Because you don't want to keep putting that amount of timing in the engine because it's causing the engine to knock. So that's the short-term retard. In this case, I've got it set to three degrees. So as soon as the ECU determines the engine's knocking, retard the timing by three degrees. But then what does it do? Well, that's the short-term decay rate. You obviously don't want to keep that three degrees out of the timing forever, so you ramp it back in. The short-term decay rate is the rate at which you ramp the timing back into the map. In this case, I've got it set to 0.2 degrees per engine cycle. So the ECU hears knock, retards three degrees of timing, and then every engine cycle following that, it puts 0.2 of a degree back in until it gets back to whatever timing you're requesting in the map. And finally, there's the hysteresis time. That's effectively a blockout zone. So the ECU says, you know what, I've heard knock, I've pulled my three degrees out, but I'm just gonna wait a little bit before I start listening for the next knock signal because you don't want a false trigger. In this case, I've got it set to 0.1 of a second or 100 milliseconds. So really what the ECU does is say, I've heard knock, retard the timing, wait however much time I've got in the hysteresis, 0.1 of a second, then put the timing back in and start listening for knock again. That's how knock control works in the short term. But next time you get to that same point of the map, the same thing's going to happen. The engine's still going to knock, the ECU's still going to need to pull timing out of it, and then ramp it back in. So why not get a little bit smart about that? And that's what the long-term trim is. So when you turn on the long-term trim, what happens is, rather than the ECU hearing the engine knock, pulling timing out and ramping back in, it says, okay, that was probably too much timing. And so it sets up a separate map that operates effectively behind the main ignition map and at the point at which the engine knocked previously, it says, you know what, let's actually pull a little bit of timing out. In this case, I've got it set up to do half a degree. So every time the engine knocks at one point, the ECU knows that, it goes to that area of the map and says, okay, in the long-term trim map, I'm gonna pull out half a degree of ignition timing. If it happens again, it'll do the same thing. It'll immediately do three degree retard and ramp the timing back in, but it'll take half a degree effectively out of the main map until the point where you get to that point in the map and you might have say two and a half degrees less timing in the map, the engine doesn't knock, knock control doesn't get triggered, and that's the right timing for that area of the map. So what I might have is I might have 20 degrees in my base ignition map and I've got here in my knock control long-term map minus 2.6 degrees. So what's actually getting delivered to the engine is 17.4 degrees of ignition timing because I've got my base ignition map, subtract what the long-term trim is doing, and that's what actually gets delivered to the engine. And that's what the engine requires not to knock. So the ECU can learn the areas of the map where there's too much ignition timing, 
make an adjustment, adjust the engine until knock no longer occurs, and that's the new ignition timing that gets delivered to the engine. Thanks for sticking with us for this longer and more in-depth, technically speaking. I hope that you got something from it. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.